Hello everyone, happy Sunday. Today we'll be getting ready for the Yule Ball and answering some questions that you asked me on Instagram. I actually went to the Yule Ball quite a few days ago, but I didn't have time to actually film a video while I was getting ready. But I thought I'd recreate the look today. I felt really pretty. It was such a magical, lovely experience. <laughs> Tucker's just jumping over. My familiar has just decided to join us. Yay. I finally got to wear this bloody dress for something. I don't know if you remember if you've been watching my videos for a long time, but I showed you this dress in a haul about three years ago. I got it second hand from eBay. It was originally from ASOS, but I had no idea when I was going to wear it and I have I hadn't ever worn it for three years, sat in my cupboard. And then finally I was invited to the Yule Ball <laughs> and I just knew it was the perfect dress. It looks kind of icy and crystally and like fluttery. It was its purpose all along. I'm just gonna get on with doing my makeup and answering some questions. I'm not gonna talk you through every step of the makeup, but I'll list down below what I'm using. So this is my before face. Mm. Murder Your Memory says, what size are you? Um, I am a size 16, sometimes 14. It kind of depends on the thing, but a 16 is like a safe bet. And I've been a 16 for a really long time. I've gone up and down in weight and my body shape has kind of changed over the years but I've pretty much always been a size 16. I definitely like to be more toned and fitter in general. I would love to be you know like a buff warrior woman but it's probably never gonna happen for me. But no I like my body shape. I used to wish I had big boobs and now I'm thankful <laughs> for my like unintimidating ones. Ang night light dom? Sorry I can't pronounce usernames very well says how's the rats? still dead. Sorry, I'm not like trying to sass you. So many people ask me that. They all passed away quite a while ago now. I think maybe some people only follow me on Instagram, so maybe they don't know and they just think I've stopped posting pictures of them, but they have a short lifespan and my boys did all pass away, unfortunately. Morrigan Rimmer, what are your views on minimalism as a lifestyle? I'm quite envious of people that are able to do it. I, I don't want to say I couldn't do it because I think I probably could if I wanted to and I put the effort in but I feel like it's maybe a little bit at odds with my personality I'm sure some minimalists are gonna uh, tell me how this is like not true and how they managed to do this but I'm a very sentimental person and there are just so many things that I, I have to keep I mean I've got a box I can see right there in front of me it's a big box full of like sentimental things. There are just so many things that I can't bring myself to get rid of that I feel like I should get rid of, but I'm not going to. I just need better storage solutions. <laughs> Life Goes North says, is it overwhelming being in the public eye? How do you handle it if so? I do find it a bit overwhelming and I have to be honest, it's like become more of a thing. It's strange because I feel like I'm more confident in myself than I've ever been. I am kicking my anxieties butt. I mean, it's still there and whatever, but I'm doing great. And yet this has become more of an issue for me and not less. And I guess I assumed it was just my anxiety making me feel uncomfortable sometimes being online. And I don't know if this will sound stupid, but coming to the realization that I do really want to be a mother and thinking about my family and something about that just triggered in me this unease about everything I was doing in terms of sharing. Also I guess there is always this underlying pressure to be a perfect celestial being. I sometimes think that being vegan kind of amplifies that because people maybe feel like expect more from me and I'm just not a perfect human being obviously. Like, I try my best but I'm not. I buy things in plastic. <laughs> and I have made an effort. I've been buying more loose fruit and veg and I've been buying stuff directly from our market. But there's just sometimes this underlying feeling of like, I'll never be good enough until I'm pooing in the woods and growing all my own food. Also the pressure to never be offensive in any way, particularly if you're someone that's very socially anxious, there's a lot of incentive for you to self-censor. And I have found myself doing that. I definitely, definitely have censored myself. I'm really lucky to do what I do and to have people interested in what I'm doing. So I don't want you to think I'm ungrateful and uncomplaining. It's just that every job comes with some things that over time great on you and that you notice maybe are not good for you and that you've got to manage. Yale Caniel says, how do you deal with hate? Very unnecessary, rude, horrible comments. Um, I will just block that person. But I don't get a lot of that. I'll often get people 
just sassing me. Those people I don't really tend to block. I used to block people a lot. I think I was maybe a bit oversensitive at one point and now I've made a conscious effort to like do the opposite of that because I do believe that you know this is my job and I put myself out there and no I don't have to accept and deal with people being rude to me but if I want to be you know a small business owner that's in the public eye and like deal with customers and things I can't be so sensitive and I'm a very sensitive person so you know sometimes horrible comments even if they're not you know violent or anything but just comments picking me apart it will really hurt me but it's not worth blocking someone about not everyone's gonna have a glowing opinion of me or my work or you know some people want to ask all awkward questions and I've got a deal with it and I just try and focus on the nice comments because there are 99.9 percent .9 really lovely nice people out there who watch me and comment on my stuff. Nikki Hange, what is Tucker doing right now? He's asleep next to me. Oh he looks so cute actually. Oh little cutie man. I'm gonna do some winged liquid eyeliner so I can't talk to you right now. I have to concentrate. <laughs> I got this in the um, vegan kind box the collaboration they did with Monomi Frost and it's actually really good I hate doing liquid eyeliner so much. I might just magic it on that would be a lot easier um, Accio winged eyeliner Yes, that looks pretty good. Secrets not lies asks when will you two start trying for babies? We will Crap leave it Tucker. It's a lid leave it Not for you no biscuit. We will start trying after our wedding. Obviously we don't know exactly how things will go. I'm very aware to not just assume that you know everything's going to go exactly as we plan. You can't make mother nature stick to your time scale. Before I carry on blabbering I just want to mention uh, this is the Gosh Rebel Eyes Mascara. This is not sponsored though I might maybe be working with Gosh at some point and I'm not just saying this because of that but this mascara is fantastic. Um, but yes, babies. I'm really excited. I'm so, so excited. Chef Sydney says, are there any conspiracy theories that you think are true? None that I can think of right off the top of my head. I used to be a massive conspiracy theorist. In kind of my early teens, you name a conspiracy theory, I probably believed it. Stumbling across like well-edited conspiracy videos on YouTube and stuff. The editing alone like convinced us. <laughs> but I definitely think there's all sorts of shady stuff going on all the time. I'm always waiting for like, <laughs> maybe this will sound a bit conspiracy theory-esque. I feel like something's coming. In terms of like social media and these the big like social media giants, I feel like something is gonna come one day. Some big scandal. There's already been some, but I feel like it's the tip of the iceberg. Here's my own mini, not really conspiracy theory, but weird thing. Should I tell you this? Because like maybe Google will suppress my video and like no one will watch it. See that's the conspiracy theory. A year ago or something like that my videos would get on the trending page a lot and this one month it was like all of my videos minus like two or something and people were constantly accusing me of paying for it and all this and I found it strange as well. I was grateful but it was strange and I was there was a lot of like strange people <laughs> Who commented on all my stuff because of it and I would tweet about it every now and again like kind of would rather not be on the trending page really I know it sounds ungrateful but um I'm happy with like a small audience and this makes me feel a bit uncomfortable and anyway I planned this little sketch funny video where um it was going to be about me like selling my soul to get on the trending page I used like an online google questionnaire thing or something there's something google has online i can't quite remember what it is where you can make your own questionnaire or a little form or something and i made a fake one it was a form and it was about like buying your way onto the trending page and selling your soul and you tick this you agree google owns your firstborn child and stuff like that and while i'm planning this video shane dawson had tweeted about like how he'd been on the trending page for the first time ever so obviously I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, it would be fine if they didn't call it the trending page, if it was called like the featured page or something, because that would imply they've chosen someone's video that they want to feature, which is fine. Though I still think it would be a bit unfair, you know, that I was chosen so much. 
But there's no way I was trending more often than Shane bloody Dawson was. So I'm a bit confused by the whole thing and I make this document on Google with like a fake buying your way onto the trending page form and I didn't even film the video, I didn't get, get any closer to filming the video, but just after filling out that form, I never trended again. Ever. I don't think I've ever been on the trending page since. My conspiracy theory brain said something like alerted Google to the fact that I was gonna make this video. They didn't want me drawing attention to it. So they were like, fine, no more trending for you, beach. I'm just gonna quickly pop on some false lashes. These are the Eilure 31 Naturals. And I'm gonna curl my hair and show you how I did the little poof that I wore. Curly hair armors. It's just so much quicker. I don't know, I don't really know why I've uh, been doing it the muggle way this whole time. So what I did with my hair, I used to do this all the time. When I was a teenager, this was like my go-to hairstyle for a while. People used to tell me it looked like I had a Cornish pasty on my head. So I kind of grab a semicircle of hair. I back combed it a little bit and now I'm gonna tie it in a little ponytail. Don't pull it super tight flush against your head. You actually wanna maybe make it a bit looser so you've got this kind of wiggle room here. And then I just grab some pins and I'm gonna put the pin through the ponytail and kind of push it up to make a little poof like that. So that's how it lays normally and then I push it forward and it makes a little poof. I'm actually gonna make it a bit of a bigger poof. If you want the poof bigger, just pull the ponytail a bit looser. But if you do it too loose, you might start to lose like some of the structural integrity of your poof. I like to put loads of pins in because I just don't trust it. <laughs> I think my little pasty was actually a bit smaller than Night of the Yule Ball, but this is basically what I did. Um, and I felt all regal and princessy. I think my grey patch looks really cool in this hairstyle. Maybe I should just start wearing this like more often. And this is the final look. This was my outfit and I felt like a magical ice princess witch, which was exactly what I was going for. It was wonderful. It was so nice. Me and my friend um, did a little waltz on platform nine and three quarters. It wasn't the most like organized waltz that anyone's ever done, <laughs> but it was cute. We got to feel like the fake snow that they used during production. It was lovely. I always enjoy going there. I was only there a couple of weeks ago <laughs> with Alex. I'll leave you now with some clips of me showing off my dress because it's wonderful and some clips of what we got up to that evening. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having a great, great weekend and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hey everyone, we are going to say thank you to our $30 patrons. I had the great idea of doing it like Mumbo number five style. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody who's a patron, come on in, jive. Uh, thank you for your pledges. I'm sorry, I feel like I should post more. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> we have a new $30 patron. First of all, Danielle Weatherall. Thank you so much, Danielle. So thank you, Lauren Erica. Nat Jankowska. I don't think you say the J. It's not Jankowska. Oh, is it Jankowska? Yeah. Well, thank you, Nat. <laughs> thank you, Jodie and Jessica. Uh, thank you, Emma and Shania. And thank you, Maria and Elizabeth. Thank you for getting involved. Is someone coming? Yes. <laughs>